One of the coolest things about any of the Fallout games is power armor. Everyone wants a set, everyone wants to be a walking tank, so a lot of the time they seek out the Brotherhood of Steel, the guys with a whole army of walking tanks. They got the power armor, the vertebrates, the energy weapons, the style, everything. In my opinion, they are the coolest looking faction, but there is a lot more than meets the eye. Let's delve deeper into the lore of the Brotherhood of Steel to find out what kind of people are behind the armor. Here's five facts about the Brotherhood of Steel. Fact number one, let's begin with how this faction of technology lovers began. Roger Maxson was a member of the United States Army. He was serving as a second in command for a security team stationed at Mariposa Military Base. On October 10th, 2077, Roger Maxson and his men discovered the horrifying FEV experiments that were being carried out on military prisoners. Five days later, their first in command, Colonel Spindle, committed suicide. Everyone looked to Roger Maxson for leadership and he assumed command. He interrogated the chief scientist, Robert Robert Anderson to find out what the extent of the experimentation was. After finding out, Roger Maxson had Anderson and most of his research team executed. Roger Maxson would declare his desertion from the army and on October 21st, he would bring his family and the family of all his men to Mariposa base. When the bombs fell on October 23rd, 2077, Mariposa base was protected. Two days later, Maxson sent out a scout in power armor to survey the atmosphere. It was good enough for them to travel. Roger Maxson's group would travel from Mariposa military base for weeks finally arriving at a military bunker called Lost Hills. This is where they would live and form the Brotherhood of Steel under Roger Maxson's guidance. Fact number two, the headquarters of the Brotherhood of Steel is the Lost Hills bunker in California. From here, the High Elder and Council are the ruling power. As time went on, the Brotherhood spread across the West Coast, developing bunkers all over, in places such as San Francisco, Shady Sands, and the Mojave. One of the most notable detachments is what became the Eastern Brotherhood of Steel. They set up in the ruins of the Pentagon, a place that they would call the Citadel. Elder Owen Lyons cared more for the protection of the human inhabitants than the original goal of collecting and preserving technology. He also began recruiting locals into the Brotherhood. This caused a cease of support from the Californian headquarters and also resulted in a group of outcasts removing themselves from the Eastern Chapter. Years after a war with the Enclave, Elder Arthur Maxson had leadership of the East Chapter, reconnecting with the Western Brotherhood and establishing a powerful military presence on the Eastern Seaboard. Fact number three, Three, you now understand how the Brotherhood came to be and about some of the different chapters that exist, but how does the actual organization of the Brotherhood work? The ranks and roles. The Western chapters of the Brotherhood have two organizations, the scribes as researchers and civilian type roles and the knights and paladins performing military roles. But as the West Coast chapters are usually quite small, we are going to talk about Elder Arthur Maxon's East Coast Brotherhood, the largest military force on the East Coast. If one is born into the Brotherhood of Steel, they become a squire and will later become become an initiate and then enter one of the divisions. Wastelanders and locals can also be recruited by sponsorship of a Brotherhood of Steel member, making them an initiate. There are three divisions within the Eastern Brotherhood. There are scribes, which themselves are split into the Order of Sword, Shield, and Quill. Order of Sword focuses on weapon maintenance and development, Order of Shield focuses on armor maintenance and development, and the Order of Quill are responsible for record keeping and focus on history and non-combat technology. Each of the scribe orders are led by a proctor who will all answer to the head scribe. There is also their newly formed Lancer Division, which serves as an air force. This consists of all those who pilot the Pridwin and those who pilot the Vertibird gunships. The Lancers provide air support and rapid tactical deployment for troops. Finally, there is the army itself, which is made up of the power armored walking tanks that decimate the battlefield. The ranks of these soldiers in order go from aspirant, knight, knight sergeant, knight captain, knight commander, paladin, paladin commander, star paladin, and finally sentinel. Of course, then you have your leadership, which is an elder, whom is currently Elder Arthur Maxon. Fact number four, the Eastern Brotherhood of Steel is the most powerful that they have ever been. They have a large military force of soldiers due to their recruiting in the Capital Wasteland. They have constructed a giant mobile airbase called the Pridwin, which allows them to mount massive campaigns. They also have a whole air force of vertebrates and lancers to pilot them. They also have vast amounts of T-60 power armor to equip their troops with, and model of power armor that exceeds both the T-45 and T-51 in protection and functionality. Not only do they have all of this technology, 
they are on a campaign to both collect more technology and improve upon it, allowing them to adapt to the future challenges. They simply are one of the most organized, well-armed, and powerful organizations around. Fact number five, many of these changes are due to Arthur Maxon's leadership. Arthur Maxon in the time of Fallout 3 was sent to the Eastern Brotherhood of Steel to be under the tutelage of Owen Lyons. Originally he was a cowardly child, but through certain experiences he would become an amazing leader. At age 10 he killed a super mutant on a training mission. At age 13 he killed a deathclaw by himself, which even Brotherhood veterans would not recommend doing. In fact, the scar on his cheek is a reminder of that encounter. He would defeat the super mutant army led by Shepard and using diplomatic skill managed to reunite the Brotherhood with the Brotherhood Outcasts. At age 16, he was appointed Elder of the Eastern Brotherhood Chapter by the Council in Lost Hills. This was a great honor and it made him the youngest Elder ever in history. Maxon is loved throughout all of the Brotherhood. Some of the members on the West Coast even worship the man, though the Western Elders had these cults hunted down and removed. Arthur cares deeply for those under his command and will not endanger them if he does not have to. He is a brilliant leader and has turned the Brotherhood into a magnificent fighting force to be proud of. He combines the humanitarian ideals of Owen Lyons and the technology collecting ideals of the Western Brotherhood into one synthesized cause. Annihilating abominations such as synths, super mutants and feral ghouls is also part of their mandate. Subscribe for more Fallout Fact videos just like this one. I sincerely hope you enjoyed it. Like the video for the Brotherhood. I'm Scott and I will see you next time.